Okay, some more circuit problems. We know that uh, the current, the total current, so the current exiting the cell before it splits up, is 300 point milliamps. Milli is 10 to the minus 3. The resistances are 8 ohms and 10 ohms apiece for Z and Y. My omega symbol is not so great. We have to find the EMF of the cell. Hmm. Well, we know the individual resistances. We know the total current. So we're looking for total potential difference, right? Which is equal to the EMF. We can use this equation. But before we use it, we have to find our total. Well, we've got this resistor X with its resistance. And then we have, let's see, the current passes through X, then it splits and passes through that parallel circuit, it combines back up, and it's done. So you've got X, which is in series with this parallel circuit, Z and Y. And I'll write that as the resistance of Z parallel with Y. Okay, what are those values? The resistance of X is 8 ohms. When we look at this parallel circuit, we could realize that we have two branches, each with 10 ohms. Now you could go calculate by adding the inverses and then reciprocating the final answer. Or you could remember the trick that if you have two equal branches, their parallel resistance is half. So that's 10 over 2, or 5 ohms. And adding gives 13. Now we can plug back in. The current total is point, one, two, three, point three oh oh amps. We multiply by total R, which is 13 ohms. And 3 times 13 is 39, so this is going to be 3.9 volts. Let's confirm that. Good. Uh, whoops. Part B. Calculate the potential difference across each resistor. Now, to do this, I'm going to redraw the entire circuit. Here's my EMF source, my cell. There's resistor X. And here is the combined resistor of Z parallel with Y, the equivalent resistor. I know the potential difference is, uh, what did I get? 3.9? I'm sorry, the EMF is 3.9. So that 3.9 is being shared across this 8 ohm resistor and the 5 ohm resistor. So, hmm, X only consumes a fraction of the EMF. What's the fraction? It's its resistance, the resistance of X relative to the total. And likewise, Z and Y, that combined resistor, consumes just a fraction of the EMF, which is 3.9. What's the fraction? It's the relative resistance. Its value, 5, over the total resistance, 13. When we work this out, 8 over 13 times 3.9, 2.4, and 5 over 13, 3.9, 1.5. So this value, 1.5, is the potential difference across y, and it's the entire potential difference across Z. They each see or experience a potential difference of 1.5 volts. Part C. 
find the power consumed by resistor X. We have these equations. We have to choose the right one, or maybe there's multiple choices to be made. For X, what do we know? We know it's resistance R. We know the current through X, 0.3 amps. And now we also know its potential difference, 2.4. So choose any two of those. I'll do I times V. The current, 0.300 amps. Potential difference is 2.4 volts. And we'll probably do this in our heads, but to avoid embarrassment from a silly mistake, 0.72. And the unit, what's the unit for power? Watt is it? Oh yeah, the watt. 16. The switch S1 is initially closed. And when it's closed, charges can go this way through that loop, and other charges can go like this through that loop. But then suddenly it's opened. And now the only remaining path is this. What happens to the power dissipated by x? How about the power dissipated by y? This is a tough question. First, we assume, and this should be stated, the EMF is constant and the resistance is constant for each of the three resistors. So when you, know, when you, when you flip the switch, the value of Rx does not change. Ry, same. Rz, same value. Okay. To think this through, um, let's start out by making up some numbers. Let's call this, yeah, let's say that every resistor has two ohms. That's a good, that's a good easy value. Initially, you've got two ohms here. And then you've got this equivalent resistor with just one ohm because Z and Y are parallel with each other. So the total resistance of the two together is half of their individual path. We can use that one half trick. Um, or if we forget it, you can just add the reciprocals, the inverses, and then take the inverse of the final answer and you will get one. So we start start like this. Where is most of the EMF getting consumed? Right here. Right now, if the EMF is like, let's say, 6 volts, this is getting 4 volts because it contributes two-thirds of the resistance. This is getting 2 volts. It only contributes one-third of the resistance. But then when you open the switch, everything changes. Now, once the switch opens, you have the 2 ohm resistor here, and all you have is Y with its original 2 ohms. There is no parallel trick. There is no second path. This is all you've got. And so now, What has happened to the potential differences? Hmm. Well, this no longer contributes two-thirds of the total resistance. Our total was three ohms above. What's our total now? Four ohms. And two is half of four. So that guy only gets half of the EMF. And this guy contributes now 2 out of 4. That's half. So it gets half of the EMF. What has just happened? Resistor X went down from 4 volts to 3. Resistor Y went from 2 volts up to 3. So for X, the 
This decreased while the resistance stayed constant. The actual resistance of X stayed constant. For resistor Y, its actual resistance was fixed at 2 every single time, but its potential difference increased because it was no longer having to, uh, you know, this, this second path no longer took away from the effective resistance. And so now it went up from, what was it? It was 2 before, increased to 3 volts. So x, what happens here? x gets less bright. y gets brighter. That is a tricky, tricky problem. <clears throat> OK, what's next? 19. We have two wires. Here's a second and a first. The first, oh, and okay, K, let's see, what's the equation? Resistivity equals RA over L. And the first wire, the value is R for resistance, the length is L. The cross-sectional area is S, so let me fix that. S instead of A is what they want us to use. A second wire. Oh, look, it's copper. They're both copper. What does that mean? That means they have the same resistivity. So this value here is the same row as we had over there. OK, what is its resistance? Oh, that's what we're looking for. Find R2, the resist resistance of the second wire. Uh, let's see, what do they tell us? The length is 2L, not the same L as here, but twice that value. It's not the same S as here, but half of that value. I'll write it like this. And we have to find the resistance, R2. There's a couple ways that um, you can solve this. You can equate the two rows and say Rs over L equals uh, R2 half of S over 2L. You could cancel the Ls. You could cancel the R. Oh, no, you can't. Those are different Rs. You could cancel the Ss. And you could say R2. Well, let's move the 1 half to the other side and move the 2 to the other side. And you would actually get 4R, like this. The other approach is you can isolate R2. You get 2L row over 1 half S. The 1 half, that is a uh, you know, double denominator. So now you have 2 row L over S. But rho L over S, if we isolate this guy, rho L over S is the original resistance. So R2 is 4 of the original. That's two ways to solve. 21 and 22. We have a cylindrical. Hmm, what's that look like? Looks like this. Conductor of length L. Diameter D. Resistivity rho. And the resistance is R. A second or different cylindrical conductor has a resistivity 2 rho length 2L, diameter 2D. Find its resistance, R2 equals question mark. We'll move that just up here. We will use uh, the resistivity equation, the one in our data booklet, RA over L. The interesting thing is, uh, OK, so here's the interesting thing. They didn't give us area. Instead, they've given us diameter. And so what we could do is we could write the area of a cylinder as 
pi d squared over 4. Right? That's the area formula. Uh, if you prefer, you don't need to deal with that. You could simply call it pi r squared, little r for, resist, uh, for radius, big R for resistance. And then you could say if the diameter doubles, so does the radius. Right? So for the second guy, for the second one, it's not the same row as before. It's two of that value. It's n we're looking for R2. We don't know what it is. The area is not the same pi R squared. No, no, no. In fact, we have doubled the diameter, so we've doubled R. There's 2R here getting squared. And down below, we have not L, but 2L. OK, so if we uh, plug in for rho right here, we have 2 times, well, rho is equal to this mess. And on the other side, we have R2 pi, we have 4 r squared. We have to distribute the square to the 2 and also to the r. And on bottom, what do we have? 2l. We can cancel the l's by dividing both sides by l, or multiplying both sides by l. We cannot cancel the r's because that's r, whereas this is some new value, r2, a second value. The pi's cancel, the r radius squareds cancel. And if we simplify, I'm going to move this to the other side by dividing. I move that to the other side by multiplying. And look at what we have. That is really weird. It actually, everything cancels out, which is kind of cool. 22, last one. A resistor of resistance 1.5 ohms has this radius. And we'll need to convert that into meters. Milli is 10 to the minus 3. I put milli on bottom to cancel out the prefix. The meters will remain. And we're going to have 0. 0.00018 meters. The resistivity is this value. That's rho. Find the length. OK. We use the equation from the data booklet. We will have to replace area with pi r squared. And then we simply plug in. Rho is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 8 ohm meters. R is the, un uh, no, we know the value of R. That's provided as. 1.5 ohms, pi, we know that value. Whoops, pi squared, don't think so. The radius is 0. 0.00018, and the length, that's our unknown. I will multiply both sides by L to make it cancel from the left side, or the right side, and to get it out of the denominator. Then I'll divide both sides by this 1.7 times 10 to the minus 8. And what do we get? We have on the right 1.5 times pi. We have times 0. 0.00018 squared. And we have to divide by, uh, let's see if I can do this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, Point eight nine eight. Uh, let's see. We would want that rounded to two sig figs, which would come to 0 0.90 meters, or 90 point centimeters, if you want to write it that way. Okay. Well done.